Let's compare Office 2.0 with Office 95. On the left we have Office 2.0 which was released in 1992 running on Windows 95 and on the right we have Office 95 running on Windows NT 4.0 which was released in 1996. In Office 2.0 the title bar matches the rest of the windows in the operating system. In Office 95 the title bar has a gradient which the rest of the windows in Windows NT 4.0 do not. The gradient is black at the left and the color set by the operating system at the right. In Office 95 you can move the toolbars around. In Office 2.0 you cannot. In Office 95 you can also customize the toolbar commands which you cannot do in Office 2.0. In Office 95 the zoom levels are in a drop down menu. In Office 2.0 you go to view and then zoom and it comes up in a dialog window. In Office 2.0 the font size can only be from 4 to 127. In Office 95 the font size can be from 1 to 1638. In Office 95 you can undo more moves than you can in Office 2.0. In Office 2.0 save is Shift F12, open is Control F12 and print is Control Shift F12. In Office 95 save is Control S, open is Control O and print is Control P. In Office 95 when you spell a word wrong it has a red squiggly line underneath and if you right click it it gives you suggestions for correct spellings of that word. In Office 2.0 it does not but you can press F7 to bring up a spell check window. You can also do this in Office 95. In Office 95 you can add a highlight to text. In Office 2.0 you cannot. In Office 2.0 drawings are done on a canvas that you then insert onto the page. In Office 95 drawings are done directly on the page. In Office 95 there is a word count tool that tells you the number of pages, words, characters, paragraphs and lines. In Office 2.0 there is not. In Office 95 when you hover over buttons it says the name of the button. In Office 2.0 it does not. In Word 2.0 when maximized on a screen that is 1920 pixels wide the page is centered. In Word 95 when maximized on a screen that is 1920 pixels wide the page is left aligned. In Excel 95 you can have multiple sheets within the same file. In Excel 4.0 you cannot. In Excel 95 when you select multiple cells that contain numbers it shows the sum at the bottom. In Excel 4.0 it does not. In Office 95 there is a new program called PowerPoint which is for making slideshow presentations. In Office 95 all the programs are loose in the programs menu. In Office 2.0 each program is in its own folder. Let's compare Office 95 to Office 97. On the left we have Office 95 running on Windows NT 4.0 which was released in 1996 and on the right we have Office 97 running on Windows 98. In Office 95 the title bar has a gradient. In Office 97 it does not. In Office 95 the icons are on buttons, in Office 97 they are not. In both Office 95 and Office 97 you can move the toolbars around. However in Office 97 you can also move the menu bar which you cannot do in Office 95. In Office 97 there is a paperclip assistant called Clipit which you can ask questions. You can also change the assistant. You can have, the dot, the genius, hoverbot, office logo, mother nature, power pop, Scribble or Will. In Office 95 the Save Confirmation dialog is in a window, in Office 97 it is in a speech bubble coming out of the Assistant. In Office 97 you can insert hyperlinks, in Office 95 you cannot. In Office 97 you can insert word art which you cannot do in Office 95. In Office 95 there are only 5 drawing shapes and they are on the drawing toolbar. In Office 97 there are a few commonly used shapes on the drawing toolbar and there is a menu with loads more shapes that are grouped into categories. In Office 97 you can align and distribute shapes which you cannot do in Office 95. In Office 97 you can change the page color. In Office 95 you cannot. In Office 97 you can insert clip art which you cannot do in Office 95. Excel 95 starts with 16 sheets by default. Excel 97 starts with 3 sheets by default. In Excel 97 you can add visual basic code to sheets, in Excel 95 you cannot. Excel 95 goes down to row 16384 which is 2 to the power of 14. Excel 97 goes down to row 65536 which is 2 to the power of 16. Let's compare Office 97 to Office 2000. On the left we have Office 97 running on Windows 98 and on the right we have Office 2000 running on Windows 2000. In Office 2000 the menus are collapsed to show only commonly used items and they can expand to show all items. When they are expanded the rest of the items are in a different color. In Office 97 the menus always show all items. In Office 97 the assistant is in a window, 
In Office 2000 it is not. In Office 97 the fonts in the font menu are all in the same font. In Office 2000 they are in the font. In Word 97 when you have multiple documents open they are each in separate sub-windows inside the same main window. In Word 2000 they are in separate main windows with no sub-windows. However in Excel 2000 they are still in separate sub-windows inside the same main window, but they show up as separate buttons on the taskbar which they do not on Office 97. In PowerPoint 97 to change slides you have to switch to slide sorter view and then click the other slide. In PowerPoint 2000 there is a pane at the left. Let's compare Office 2000 to Office XP. On the left we have Office 2000 running on Windows 2000 and on the right we have Office XP which was released in 2001 running on Windows ME which was released in 2000. In Office XP there is a startup pane at the right by default, however this can be disabled. In Office 2000 the menu highlight looks the same as the normal menu highlight in Windows 2000. In Office XP the menu highlight has a border around the edge and the icons are on a different colored strip. This is different to what menus normally look like in Windows ME. In Office 2000 there is a paperclip assistant by default. In Office XP there is no assistant by default. But the assistant can be enabled or disabled in both. In Office XP there is a box in the top right corner where you can type a question for help. In Office 2000 you can ask the assistant for help. In Office XP you can translate. In Office 2000 you cannot. In Office XP there is a clipboard history that allows you to collect up to 24 items. In Office 2000 there is not. In Office 2000 when you open PowerPoint it has a startup wizard. In Office XP it just takes you straight to a blank slide. In Office 2000 when you insert a new slide it comes up with a dialog box. In Office XP it comes up with a pane at the side. In Office XP it shows a thumbnail for each slide. In Office 2000 it does not. Let's compare Office XP to Office 2003. On the left we have Office XP which was released in 2001 running on Windows ME which was released in 2000 and on the right we have Office 2003 running on Windows XP which was released in 2001. In Office XP there is a grey theme. In Office 2003 there is a blue 3D theme. In Office XP the menu highlight is blue, in Office 2003 the menu highlight is orange. In Office XP the programs are loose in the programs menu, in Office 2003 the programs are inside the Microsoft Office folder. In Office 2003 there is a new program called Publisher which is for making publications. Let's compare Office 2003 to Office 2007. On the left we have Office 2003 running on Windows XP which was released in 2001 and on the right we have Office 2007 running on Windows Vista which was released in 2006. In Office 2003 there is a menu bar at the top with some toolbars underneath which can be moved around. There is also a status bar at the bottom. In Office 2007 there is a tab bar at the top with the ribbon below, each tab contains its own set of groups which contain buttons and tools, some groups have a button to bring up a dialog box. There is an Office button in the top left corner which brings up the Office menu which has New, Open, Save, Save As, Print, Prepare, Send, Publish and Close at the left and Recent Documents at the right. Some of the options have an arrow that bring up a sub-menu. To the right of the Office button there is a quick access toolbar that contains shortcuts to commonly used features and you can add your own shortcuts. You can also minimize the ribbon. In Office 2007 there is also a status bar at the bottom. In Office 2007 the window title is centered even though window titles are not normally centered in Windows Vista. In Office 2007 when using arrow the title bar uses the same arrow as the rest of the windows, however when using the basic or classic themes the title bar has its own skin which is different to the other windows. If you install Office 2007 on Windows XP the title bar also has its own skin. Office 2007 has a blue color scheme by default, however this can be changed to silver or black. Office 2003 takes the color scheme of the operating system. In Office 2003 each item on the menu bar has a line under one of the letters, pressing Alt and then that letter will bring up that menu. Each item in the menu has a line under one of the letters and pressing that letter will activate that item. In Office 2007 pressing Alt brings up a letter next to each tab. Pressing that letter will then open that tab and bring up a letter next to each button in that tab. Pressing those letters will then activate those buttons. In Word 2003 the default font is Times New Roman and in Word 2007 the default font is Calibri. In Office 2003 the font and paragraph options are on the formatting toolbar. In Office 2007 they are in the font and paragraph groups of the Home tab. In Office 2003 to insert a picture you would go to the Insert menu. In Office 2007 you would go to the Insert tab. In Office 2003 to insert a table you would go to the Table menu and then Insert. In Office 2007 you would go to the Insert tab and then Table and you can graphically choose the size. In Office 2003 to insert a shape you use the Auto Shapes menu on the Draw toolbar. In Office 2007 you go to the Insert tab and then Shapes. 
In Office 2007 when a shape is selected a new tab called Format comes up under Drawing Tools. In Office 2003 the formatting options for the selected shape are on the Drawing Toolbar. In Office 2007 they are under the Format tab under Drawing Tools. In Office 2003 when a picture is selected a Picture Toolbox comes up. In Office 2007 a Format tab comes up under Picture Tools. In Office 2003 to change the zoom you use the Zoom menu on the Standard Toolbar. In Office 2007 there is a zoom slider in the bottom right corner. In Office 2003 the selected text highlight is color negative, in Office 2007 it is blue. In Office 2007 when you hover over formatting options it gives you a preview of what that will look like, in Office 2003 it does not. In Office 2003 when you move or resize an image it moves around a dotted outline and the image only moves when you let go. In Office 2007 it moves around a transparent version of the image. In Word 2003 documents save as a .doc file, in Word 2007 they save as a .docx file, however you can still save in the old .doc format as well. .docx files are actually zip files with a different extension, if you change the extension to .zip you can have a look inside. Images in the document are stored as image files in the zip. The text and formatting are stored in XML files. .doc files are not zip files. But if you open them with Notepad you can see the encoding and you might be able to find some of the text. In Office 2007 you can insert equations which you cannot do in Office 2003. In Word 2007 you can also insert a table of contents which you cannot do in Word 2003. Excel 2003 goes down to row 65536 which is 2 to the power of 16 and right to column IV which is 256 or 2 to the 8. Excel 2007 goes down to row 1,048,576 which is 2 to the 20 and right to XDF which is 16,384 or 2 to the 14. Publisher 2007 still looks the same as Publisher 2003 and it still saves in the same .pub format. Let's compare Office 2007 to Office 2010. On the left we have Office 2007 running on Windows Vista which was released in 2006 and on the right we have Office 2010 running on Windows 7 which was released in 2009. In Office 2007 the title bar is arrow and the tabs are on a separate bar. In Office 2010 the arrow from the title bar extends down into the tab bar. In Office 2007 the color scheme is blue by default and in Office 2010 it is silver by default. But they both have the same three color scheme options. Office 2010 also has its own skin when using the basic or classic themes and changing the color scheme will change the color of that skin. Office 2010 also has its own skin when ran on Windows XP. In Office 2010 there is a button to minimize the ribbon. In Office 2007 you can minimize the ribbon by double clicking the current tab. In Office 2010 you can customize the ribbon which you cannot do in Office 2007. In Office 2007 there is an Office button in the top left corner which is the Office logo in a circle. In Office 2010 there is a File button which is the color of the application. In Office 2007 when you click the Office button it brings up a two-column menu. In Office 2010 when you click the File button it brings up the Backstage view which is full screen and there is a swirly pattern in the bottom right corner which is the color of the application. They both have a column down the left. In Office 2007 Options and Exit are at the bottom right of the Office menu, in Office 2010 they are at the bottom of the left column of the Backstage view. In Office 2010 Save, Save As, Open and Close are options that do something and exit the Backstage view. Info, Recent, New, Print, Save and Send and Help change what is displayed to the right. In Office 2007 the options that have an arrow bring up more options to the right. In Office 2007 under Print you can select Print Preview. You can select Quick Print to print with the current settings or print to change the print settings which brings up a dialog box. In Office 2010 when you select Print it shows a print preview to the right and it has the print settings and print button to the left of the preview. In Office 2010 when you click New it shows templates and it has a preview of the template and a Create button to the right. In Office 2007 when you click New it brings up a dialog box with the templates. In Office 2007 it is Recent Documents on the right of the Office menu. In Office 2010 when you select Recent it is Recent Documents and Recent Places to the right. In Office 2010 when Info is selected it shows the properties to the right and it has a preview and options to protect and inspect the document. In Office 2007 Properties is under Prepare and so is Inspect and Encrypt. In Office 2007 the icons are on buttons, in Office 2010 they are not. In Office 2010 you can insert a screenshot which you cannot do in Office 2007. In Office 2010 the word art looks different to how it does in Office 2007. In Office 2010 you can remove backgrounds from images which you cannot do in Office 2007. You can mark areas to keep and areas to remove. In Office 2007 you can only crop an image normally. 
In Office 2010 you can crop an image to a shape. In Office 2010 you can also crop an image to an aspect ratio. In Office 2010 you can add artist effects to images which you cannot do in Office 2007. In Office 2007 you can change the color of an image which you can also do in Office 2010. In PowerPoint 2007 there is an Animations tab. In PowerPoint 2010 there is a Transitions tab and an Animations tab. In PowerPoint 2007 the Object Animations are in a drop-down menu under the Animations tab and the Slide Transitions are also under the Animations tab. In PowerPoint 2010 the Object Animations are under the Animations tab and the Slide Transitions are under the Transitions tab. In PowerPoint 2010 the Transitions have names underneath, in PowerPoint 2007 they do not. In PowerPoint 2010 there are some new transitions. In Office 2010 Publisher has been updated to the ribbon interface. However it still saves in the same .pub format. In Office 2010 there is a new program called OneNote which is for taking notes. Let's compare Office 2010 to Office 2013. On the left we have Office 2010 running on Windows 7 which was released in 2009 and on the right we have Office 2013 running on Windows 8.1 which was released in 2013. In Office 2010 most of the icons are skeuomorphic, in Office 2013 most of the icons are flat. In Office 2010 the top bar is arrow, in Office 2013 the top bar is solid and flat. In Office 2013 the default color scheme is white but it can be changed to dark gray or light gray. In Office 2010 when you hold the mouse over items the highlight is orange, in Office 2013 when you hold the mouse over items the highlight is the color of the application. In Office 2013 when using the white or light gray color schemes the status bar is the color of the application, but when using the dark gray color scheme the status bar is dark gray. In Office 2013 you can sign in with your Microsoft account which you cannot do in Office 2010. If you do sign in with your Microsoft account then you can have some art in the top right corner, this art can be changed. You can also save documents directly to OneDrive. In Office 2010 the tabs are in title case and in Office 2013 they are in capitals. In Office 2013 when you open an application it has a start screen by default. In Office 2010 it takes you straight to a blank document. However in Office 2013 it is possible to disable the start screen by going to options and unchecking show the start screen when this application starts. Let's compare the backstage view. In Office 2010 it still displays the tabs at the top. In Office 2013 it has a back button. In Office 2010 clicking open or save as brings up a dialog. In Office 2013 clicking open shows recent documents and save as shows recent folders and there is a browse button that brings up the save as dialog. In Office 2010 read mode hides the toolbars. In Office 2013 read mode also hides the toolbars and you can change the page color to spear or inverse. By default read mode uses the column layout, however you can change it to paper layout. In Office 2010 there is a button to minimize the ribbon, in Office 2013 you can minimize the ribbon and you can also auto hide the tabs. In Office 2010 when you move objects around it moves a transparent version of the object, in Office 2013 it moves the object and it also aligns with the center of the page which it does not in Office 2010. In Office 2010 you can insert clip art, it comes with a few stored locally on the computer and you can get more from office.com. In Office 2013 clip art has been replaced by online pictures which does a Bing image search filter to Creative Commons only. In Word 2010 when maximized on a screen that is 1920 pixels wide the page is left aligned. In Word 2013 when maximized on a screen that is 1920 pixels wide the page is centered. In Word 2013 you can edit PDFs, although it can sometimes mess up the formatting. In Word 2010 you cannot edit PDFs. Excel 2010 comes with three sheets by default. Excel 2013 comes with one sheet by default, but you can add or remove sheets in both. You can also change the default number of sheets in both. In Excel 2010 when you have multiple files open they are in separate sub-windows inside the same main window. In Excel 2013 they are in separate main windows with no sub-windows. In Excel 2013 there is now an option to insert recommended chart. In Office 2010 the selected text highlight is blue. In Office 2013 it is gray. In PowerPoint 2010 the slide is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio by default. In PowerPoint 2013 the slide is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio by default. However this can be changed in both. In PowerPoint 2010 format background comes up in a dialog box. In PowerPoint 2013 format background comes up in a pane at the right. In PowerPoint 2013 there are some new transitions. Let's compare Office 2013 to Office 2016. 
On the left we have Office 2013 running on Windows 8.1 which was released in 2013 and on the right we have Office 2016 running on Windows 10 Anniversary Update which was released in 2016. In Office 2013 the three themes are white, light gray or dark gray. In Office 2016 they are colorful, dark gray or white, colorful is the default. When using the colorful theme the bar at the top is the color of the application. The white theme in Office 2016 looks very much like the white theme in Office 2013. The dark gray theme in Office 2016 is darker than the dark gray theme in Office 2013. In Office 2013 when using the dark gray theme the backstage view is still white. In Office 2016 when using the dark gray theme it is dark gray and when using the colorful theme it is light gray. In Office 2013 the status bar is the color of the application. In Office 2016 the status bar is gray. In Office 2013 when you hold the mouse over things the highlight is the color of the application. In Office 2016 it is gray. In Office 2013 when you hold the mouse over a tab name it goes the color of the application. In Office 2016 a box comes up around it. In Office 2013 it has the application icon in the top left corner. In Office 2016 it does not. In Office 2013 the tabs are in capitals. In Office 2016 they are in title case. In Office 2016 page layout has been renamed to layout. In Office 2016 there is now a tell me feature where you can type a command and it will come up. In Office 2016 there is a share button in the top right corner. In Office 2013 there is not. In Office 2016 the object resize handles are bigger than they are in Office 2013. In PowerPoint 2016 under review there is now an option to start inking which was not there in PowerPoint 2013. You can use a range of different pens. In PowerPoint 2013 the maximum video resolution you can export in is 720p, in PowerPoint 2016 it is 1080p. In Office 2013 the applications are in the Microsoft Office 2013 group in the apps list, in Office 2016 they are loose in the apps list. Let's compare Office 2016 to Office 2019. On the left we have Office 2016 running on Windows 10 Anniversary Update which was released in 2016 and on the right we have Office 2019 running on Windows 10 October 2018 Update. In Office 2016 when you switch between tabs it just changes, in Office 2019 there is an animation when you switch between tabs. In Office 2019 there is more padding above and below the tab names than there is in Office 2016. In Office 2016 sign in is under the X maximize and minimize buttons. In Office 2019 sign in is to the left of the X maximize and minimize buttons. In Office 2019 in addition to colorful, white and dark gray there is now also a black theme. In Office 2019 under Backstage View Info there is buttons that are not there in Office 2016. In Office 2019 you can now insert SVG images. In Office 2016 you cannot. In Office 2019 you can insert 3D models which you cannot do in Office 2016. You can rotate the model in 3D and you can pan and zoom. In Excel 2019 there is a new type of chart called a funnel chart. In PowerPoint 2019 you can now insert a summary zoom. You can also insert a slide zoom. In PowerPoint 2016 the maximum video resolution you can export in is 1080p, in PowerPoint 2019 it is 4K. Let's compare Office 2019 to Office 365. On the left we have Office 2019 running on Windows 10 October 2018 update and on the right we have Office 365 which was released in 2021 running on Windows 10 May 2021 update. Office 2019 is a one-time purchase and Office 365 is a monthly subscription. In Office 2019 the title and tab bar are both the color of the application and blend in together and the ribbon below is gray. In Office 365 the title bar is the color of the application and the tab bar is gray and blends in with the ribbon below. In Office 2019 the gray from the ribbon extends up into the selected tab. In Office 365 the selected tab has an underline. In Office 2019 the Save Confirmation dialog has Save. Don't save and cancel. In Office 365 you can choose the name and location from within the Save Confirmation dialog and then click Save to save. In Office 2019 clicking Save will open the Save as dialog. In Office 365 clicking the title allows you to upload the file to OneDrive and change its name or location if it is on OneDrive. In Office 2019 clicking the title doesn't do anything. Let's compare the backstage view. In Office 365 there is now a home section. In Office 2019 under Save As it shows recent folders. In Office 365 it has a built-in file browser and you can save files from within the backstage view. In Office 365 account, feedback and options are at the bottom of the screen. In Office 2019 they are at the bottom of the list. In Office 365 there is now a focus mode. 
In Office 365 there is also now an immersive reader, you can read aloud, show syllables, text spacing, change line focus, page color and column width. In Office 365 you can now dictate which converts your voice into text. In Word 365 under Review there is now a CV Assistant. In Excel 365 there is now an option to analyze data. In PowerPoint 365 there is now an option to reuse slides. In PowerPoint 365 you can also now add subtitles. Goodbye.